Uh, I do have a special report for you, and that is uh, will warm the cockles of your heart. As you know, in his uh, press conference in Palm Beach, Trump said that among those he would look to for foreign policy advice was Richard Haas. This is the same Richard Haas who gave a speech just before Putin moved into Crimea saying we didn't need to worry about the Soviets. They were just a global power. I spoken to this morning by an intimate of mine at his synagogue in New York. I said that he would never serve a President Trump, and he considered Trump a joke. So uh, it is very clear that this attempt to get Trump to swallow Haas as an advisor uh, was uh, something someone put in his mind. Haas has no interest, and I would hope Trump will figure out that Haas is a globalist. Is an neocon. Well, let's go further. It's clear. They approach him. He meets with them out of respect. They leak it knowing they're hated to hurt him. They're, they're using, they're listening to me. The only way to destroy Trump is for them to endorse him. Well, and Haas met privately with Trump, and now it's the Romney style betrayal. Well, you were right. And I, I'm not trying to kiss your rump here. It's totally true. You have called everything in royal flush spades. You said Romney was getting ready. And I, I know you're, I believe you, but I thought, man, you're off the reservation. A, two, a week and a half later, he does it. He now tells the Washington Times and in a speech, he says, I may, yes, I may take a broker convention. If people want me, I'm going to be president. I, I, I'll take the nomination. Everything you said has come true. You were told that by sources or did you just, just, just uh, divine that? Sources. I mean, uh, Alex, I spent nine years in this business. I have friends working in every one of these campaigns. And in politics, people talk. Uh, I have an underground of sources in every one of these campaigns. I know people, I'm friends with people, globalists, who are working for Romney. No, I understand. You called it a stonezone.com. Stay there, Roger. Roger, stay there. I want to come back with you. If you leave us stay longer, too, we'll take these callers so they can talk to you. But this is so important. Because the establishment is in a panic, cardiac arrest over Trump. They're pulling out the stops. And you heard it. It appears that they're finally starting to slow him. They're slowing his rise. They're cutting off his numbers. Roger Stone's got to leave us after this segment. Then I'll go to your calls for the balance of the broadcast. And I'll be back tomorrow live, 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern for the four-hour broadcast. But you heard him. 40 years in politics, nine campaigns, worked in four administrations inside of him. Highest levels. He's never seen anything like it. Uh, the New York Times, you know, claims, oh, Trump met with us and said it's all rhetoric. Well, if that was the case, they wouldn't be going after him. Because, you know, Clinton and Bush and people told the papers it's all rhetoric and they believed it. They hate Trump for some reason. And they are scared to death right now. Uh, Roger, what are the other big issues here? It's just so incredible to see... Romney saying, hey, we'll have a broker convention to see Kasich saying it, to see them mainlining it. Kasich said, we're not men in smoky rooms. We're going to be legitimate. And no matter what Trump does, we're going to take it from him. That is total 1984 doublespeak bizarro land. We're going to steal it, but we're going to do it right. They are out of control. This is just for me a referendum against the elite now. But what really scared me was you said, the numbers show, and that's what I, as a layman studying this, saw. His wins weren't as big as they were. Places he might have won by small margins, he lost. That tells me what we saw in Texas and other states is in. They are shaving points. They are cheating Trump to make it look legitimate at a broker convention. Uh, tell us what you really think is going on, Roger Stone. Yeah, the good news here, of course, is this fight is far from over. Uh, as you know, I'm working with the Trump ballot security project. We've set up, as I told you, a toll-free number where we're getting reports. Recognize that if we can find enough documentation of vote stealing, we can challenge the Cruz delegates in the Credentials Committee at the convention. We can move to unseat stolen delegates in Texas, Kansas, Kentucky, and other states. This fight is far from over. I'm working with many veterans of the Ron Paul operation and others, so I'm going back to Reagan to uh, put together a strategy uh, to uh, stop the steal. Uh, for those who want to support our efforts, or if anybody knows the voter uh, fraud or irregularity, you can go to stopthesteal.org, uh, and you can uh, help us. Uh, you can contact us. You can send us videotapes. You can send us photos. And, of course, you can make a, a contribution. We are doing, really, what uh, the Trump campaign doesn't seem to be doing in this case. We hope to have poll watchers, trained poll watchers, in every site in Florida. Believe me, I know Florida intimately, having been involved in the recount. If we don't do this... They will steal the state from Marco Rubio. So this is prophylactic, as well as looking at some of the big uh, voter irregularities that we've already seen. 
uh, this is uh, this is Armageddon. This is the fight, and we need folks to get down in there. Trump, I think, has to articulate uh, in more specific terms his agenda. Uh, he has to uh, he has to uh, romp in Ohio and Florida. If he does that. I think it'll be very hard to steal this. He wins one of two. He's still in a fight for his life, but it's a fight he can win. If it's if he loses both, we are headed to a brokered convention in which they will try to steal it from. Will the-